Hey everyone, we have a great show for you today. Chris Procopio from Waysafe joins us to talk about the many kinds of hitches they make. One thing all of their hitches have in common is that Waysafe is the only hitch to provide a built-in hydraulic scale, allowing you to measure tongue weight. This allows you to know what your tow weight balance is and improves your overall towing experience. So no matter what you tow, a Waysafe hitch will give you the peace of mind and increased confidence while towing. So let's get Chris on here and get this episode started. Hi, Chris. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Waysafe? So I have been at Waysafe for uh, five years now. I was actually second hire at the company. I'm the director of sales and online operations here. Um, honestly, great company. I graduated from Brigham Young University and their global supply program. Um, so operations is my background. Uh, Brandon Domer, uh, Brandon Doman, excuse me, uh, actually came and recruited me from BYU with a startup company um, that him and his brother with the inventor, Kevin McAllister, were, were starting up. And tons of excitement. I mean, I, I've, I had interviews at, at GM, at Marriott, at, gosh, just dozens of large billion dollar companies. And of course, there's always risk with the startup but their excitement about this new product line, how they were going to revolutionize the automotive industry, the, it offered a potential that I didn't see in any other of those, those larger scale opportunities, let's say. So yeah, I've been here for five years, absolutely love it. We've grown from, gosh, me and three employees, and now we're employing dozens of people here in the United States and internationally. Um, and just the amount of growth, I mean, it's, it's, it's astounding way, way safe our number one focus of course is, is towing safety that's the innovation we've we've brought to the market through uh integration of, of safety design into into towing products weight distributions adjustable ball mounts fifth wheels all of those applications you said that you uh you hired dozens of people across the country so you have different locations are they uh distributors what are what are different people doing in different locations so our biggest location is here in Linden, Utah. That's where actually we manufacture all of our ball mounts, where all the major distribution process happens. So that is our, our core base of, of employees here in the United States. Uh, across, we actually have a factory um, internationally also that helps uh, supply a lot of our subcomponents. Um, for example, our, our, our nuts, our, our pens, uh, s small objects like that that we've, we've outgrown in our current growth uh, our, our current growth to be able to manufacture these, these small little nuggets in our in our product line. And so such as, uh, for example, our adjustable ball mount, the draw bar, the slider, all of the, the heavy duty components, and then our nuts and bolts come from our, our company owned factories internationally. Okay. And then uh, you said that you were a second hire. Has the company been around for five years? And you said you've been with them for five years. Is that the very start? Gosh, company was around for six. The LLC was organized seven years ago, let's say that. Okay. <laughs> so the, the idea was born seven years ago. Um, what, we, what we currently accept as a, as a company with, with manufacturing distribution precedes me by about a year. Uh, but that was between the, the three, Kevin McAllister, Brandon Doman, and Bryce Doman, them and an assembly crew with a, a vertical CNC mill here in Linden, Utah. Was, was the beginning. And that, that process was occurring about a little over a year before I began. And then since I began, we have quintupled our menu. Oh gosh, I say quintupled. I have I don't know, 20 times our manufacturing capability. I mean, what we were making there on that single machine, uh, we've invested million dollars in, in, in new equipment, new, new uh, CNC mills, both vertical and horizontal. We do all of our prototyping here in house. Uh, also, even our product testing, we actually just got done uh, fitting out an entire testing site here on campus. Um, we're about to expand our square footage here in Linden by another uh, 40%. We're expanding into a, a whole neighboring complex. Um, I, 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 I feel like there is not a day I don't walk into the office that something hasn't changed. Either something's been grown, some, somebody new has been hired. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely fast paced and COVID hasn't helped it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely added a uh, gasoline onto the fire. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, so you have a few Waysafe has a few different products. Uh, the first one we want to talk about is the, the ball, the ball hitch. Um, I think you guys call it a 
drop pitch maybe is the yeah sorry so draw pitch is the name for it we call it an adjustable ball mount um, which is our legacy product it was the first product we came out with the idea of our adjustable ball mount is well it's an adjustable ball mount you can see it commonly on the market it has it plugs into the receiver on the rear end of your vehicle and it allows you to adjust the height so the advantage over a fixed height which you've probably seen a fixed height ball mount just those little bars of steel with that tow ball sticking out of the back of a truck is it actually allows you to adjust the height so instead of having four to six different sized fixed heights you have a single ball mount that can help fit all those height needs so our innovation is we actually developed a hydraulic drive and gauge that we've installed and built into these adjustable ball mounts what's called the way safe adjustable ball mount the importance of this hydraulic scale and the size side of the the adjustable ball mount is it actually measures vehicular tongue weight and so when you're loading up your trailer, when you're going camping, when you're going off road, and when you're just moving down the street and you're loading your, your fridge, your mattress, your furniture uh, inside, of the, inside of the trailer, this scale actually lets you know if you have enough weight on the front of your trailer, right? And the main reason that's important is just towing peace of mind. We want to eliminate trailer sway and jackknifing. And these two are the leading causes of towing related fatalities in the United States. <laughs> And so we developed this gauge so the average person can come up, look at their ball mount, see how much weight they have there, how much tongue weight they've placed on the rear axle of their truck, and then they can adjust that load accordingly. Department of Transportation suggests you have anywhere between 10 and 15% of your tongue weight right there on that ball mount itself. So if I'm towing a 10,000 pound trailer, I know I need that little number on that scale to read between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds to, to know that I'm towing safe. You just said something, Chris, that I never thought about. You said to make sure that you have enough weight on that tongue amount. I always think of people just putting too much. I never thought of it being too little. That's that's a thing. You can have not enough. Yes, dead on. And so it's called trailer sway when you don't have enough. And we actually have quite a few videos online um, that kind of demos this principle is if you have too much load on the back of the trailer, it actually ends up lifting up the rear of the truck, which could even get you negative tongue weight, that, if, uh, that opposite load. But that's more of an extreme example. Let's say instead of 10%, which the Department of Transportation recommends, you only have 5%. You throw in a 10,000 pound trailer, you only have 500 pounds of tongue weight. Because that trailer is so back heavy, once you get on that highway, you get going about 45 miles an hour, you'll notice that that rear trailer starts swaying behind you. And that's what we call trailer sway. And okay. it's so dangerous because it's a self-reinforcing oscillation. So what that means is if I'm driving down the highway, I hit 45, my trailer starts swaying behind me because it's not properly loaded. The worst thing I can do is brake. And that's our, that's our first instinct, right? Like I'm going too fast. I'm losing control of this trailer. I need to stop the car. And the second that stops, that's where it loses control. And it'll tip, it can tip over and even take the vehicle with it. I was raised in... Uh, in Colorado, and I, we spent a lot of time in Wyoming driving back and forth, and there is not a windier state than Wyoming. I mean, it is clear as day when you're driving through the interstate. And so what we saw is every every winter in particular, we'd be driving through to visit family in Utah or, or, or just family vacation, and we would see trailers and semis tipped on the side of the road, right? And what happens is once that trailer sway begins, especially when there's out of control acts of God, such as wind that'll come and especially a strong breeze will start pushing on that trailer. And again, that's that self-reinforcing. And that wind's gonna push on that trailer, your truck's trying to control it. And, and most of the time, if you're not trailer, trailering uh, correctly and safely, I mean, mother nature's gonna win, right? That, that tug of war is something you're gonna lose. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I didn't realize that that was one of the causes of that was not having enough weight on the tongue. Yeah, that's, I would have pretty interesting. I would never guess that either. So this makes it very easy when somebody is connecting their trailer to their truck. There's a gauge right on the hitch that tells them where they're at. Has that gauge always been there in the first uh, from the very first one of your hitches? Has this always been the design and the idea behind the way safe? Yes, that well, the original prototype going back in the day, seven years ago, was a fixed height unit with that scale built in. And it was the second, the actual first brought to market product was our adjustable ball mount with that scale built in. And that, and that is our, our uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Would it be flagship? 
Thank flagship. you. There you go. Flagship. I wanted to say ship flag or something. <laughs> so the adjustable ball mount with that gauge built in has actually become our flagship product. So a towing peace of mind, safety on the road is the company's motto, right? That's our, our, our corporate responsibility that we want to share with, with every American family, with every other company there on the road. And so that's where the vast majority of our marketing dollars goes, our innovation goes, placing the hydraulic gauge that has the ability to, to truly save lives into as many assets of the, the towing industry as possible. And this kind of explains a lot of our forays into the, the RV market with our new true tow weight distribution system or our gooseneck market or the fifth wheel market that we've just innovated in. Yeah, I, I wonder what, so what is the construction of the hitches? Is it, is it a steel, I guess? So the, the hitch themselves are made of aircraft grade aluminum. Okay. Um, so it's it's one of the strongest aluminums on the market. Um, we use several different types of aluminum in order to, to place the shear resistance and the shear strength where we need it. Um, the ball mounts themselves, the reason we chose aluminum really is it's, it's comparable strength. Our ball mounts for our two inch receiver, you can tow up to 12,500 pounds. Our two and a half inch receivers um, you can tow up to 18,500 pounds. And we have a new three inch receiver line. You can tow up to 21,000 pounds with these aluminum ball mounts. And so the strength, we were able to engineer it in a way to maximize that strength. And at the same time, um, we're cutting the weight of the units in half. I mean, a, a big 10 inch drop for a two inch receiver, we're looking at about 20, 21 pounds of, of total adjustable ball mount weight. So plugging oh, in your truck's a lot easier. Adjusting's a lot easier. You know, you're, you're, not, you're not lugging an anchor around. Yeah, we've um, talked to people, neither Kenny or I don't have uh, tongue towable trailers or ball hitch towable trailers. I have a fifth wheel and he has a class A drivable, but we've talked to people. And one of the things that uh, people have a lot of problems with, with a travel trailer is just when they get somewhere and disconnect their trailer is the weight of the components that you have to take off your truck uh, when you're towing and the hitch is one of those because they can be pretty heavy. So I guess the aluminum kind of saves on that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you guys know weight distributions, whether, you know, it's, it's one of our competitors or our own, they're heavy. And it, it's one of the big sayings, a lot of the RV shows and automotive shows I've been to, you know, I'll talk to some, some, more experienced customers, a little more age. Um, and the biggest reason they'll stop towing their large trailers or whatever it might be is it, it, it's not worth moving that weight because it puts pain on their back, pain on their joints. And it, what used to be a, a 30, you know, a, a couple minute setup, all of a sudden they have to prep themselves and lift and take breaths. And I mean, it's this whole hassle. And the difficulties of setting up the trailering system have now outweighed the benefit of using it. And that, that's, that seems insane, but it happens across the industry. And so our product, especially focused in the aluminum, making these products easy to use is in order to expand the RVing industry, the automotive, the trailering industry, and the enjoyment of that industry for as long as possible. Yeah, you're, you're literally <laughs> fixing a pain point, <laughs> right? 100%, 100%. The other advantage that I would think of using aluminum would be resistance to weathering. Is that also part of it? Is that, a, is that an advantage? Huge advantage and you're dead on. So our, our ball mounts don't corrode um, with the aluminum finish. They stay looking great for years. I mean, people, we, we're, we're seeing these units seven, year, seven years old and they might have a couple dents on them for being used, a little, little love worn. Um, but honestly, they look great. They're not rusting out like a lot of the, the steel alternatives, you know, and they'll put a black powder coat on there and, and, and try to weather resist it. But the second friction comes to that powder coating, that powder coating starts to peel off. And we've all experienced that. And so the aluminum allows us to have a good looking product for as long as possible. And for some people, that's as important as the safety factor. And it's also why we use stainless steel tow balls. So the steel components of our unit, like the tow ball itself, whether it's the two inch or two and five sixteenths, is actually a stainless steel construction because we decided if the aluminum's not going to rust, our steel shouldn't rust either. And our cost, factory cost, is about gosh two to three fold what a what a normal carbon steel would be. But we decided investing in this product and and, and therefore investing in our customer uh, is the best thing we can do for long term brand awareness and, and brand success. So stainless steel 
we only use stainless steel and, and high strength corrosion resistant aluminum. And the, and the, the weighing mechanism, you said it's a hydraulic uh, mechanism. Is that, um, does that require like periodic calibration? Does it, have you guys tested one over several years to see if that hydraulic method works over time consistently? We do. So there's two points on that. So first, our, our company truck, we have this old beat up Dodge that's been using the same way safer as long as I've been here. And, and we go out there and we test it. We have an annual test and we just make sure it's reading same. Um, and the accuracy, the variation on that gauge is, is very minimal. Um, and honestly, we, we're, we try to be on the cutting edge of innovation for as long as we can. So that scale is something that we're constantly innovating. We're, we are on cycle three of that gauge. So now the gauge itself, instead of using a copper coil-based gauge, which is probably the most common on the market, it's actually a stainless steel gauge. The reason we mo chose to move to stainless steel is fatigue resistance, mm -hmm. right? So as it's going through the mechanism and, and reading out that weight, it's able to return to its original form a lot more successfully and a lot longer. And the accuracy on it, it was about a 40% improvement of, of accuracy, reducing our accuracy to within 50 pounds down to within 20 pounds. And again, that, that accuracy window is important because it allows us to, the more accurate it is, the more often we have to adjust it and calibrate it, right? And so we decided to have that 20 pound window so that there's a little bit of, of, of ruggedness built in and so that it's not something. But to build on that, all of our WASIC products, all of our gauges across the industries come with a lifetime warranty on that. So if you would notice the gauge was not accurate, or let's say you took a hammer to that gauge out of rage or for whatever reason, <laughs> for the lifetime of that adjustable ball mount, that weight distribution, that fifth wheel, that gooseneck, we will replace that gauge for you at no cost. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's very impressive. You can't beat a lifetime warranty. Well, it's a piece of mind. Like I said, we're innovating with that gauge. So if there's a new rendition out and you would like to get that new stainless steel coil, just reach out to one of our customer service representatives. We'll make sure you're getting taken care of. And the, uh, the, the precision, I would imagine if you're within 75 or 100 pounds, that's pretty darn close when we're talking about thousands of pounds numbers. So if you guys are engineering it down to like 20 pounds, that's, that's pretty darn good, I think, as far as precision goes. <laughs> And, and, and that's what we try to do. We, we, we want to try to satisfy the vast majority of our customers. And for the, the average Joe, within 100 pounds, 150 pounds, that's good enough. You got a 10 to 15% window. I mean, between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds, what's 100 pounds? Mm -hmm. But we know we do have those customers that expect excellence out of their products, that expect excellence out of WaySafe. And that's the customer base we're striving to serve because we know as we serve for the most picky of customers that the average Joe will be more than satisfied with the end result. And so that's that's our company policy of, of just striving for excellence and, and standing behind the product we provide. And then what what about a weight district the weight distribution hitch that you guys sell? Why is that why is a weight distribution hitch important for people towing travel trailers over just a regular standard ball mount hitch assembly? That is a great question. And the weight distribution system, the true tow weight distribution has been in development whew, about four years it took for us to bring it to the marketplace itself. Honestly, a year after I started at the company, we started working on this new true tow and it has been a crazy ride. Um, so the importance, at the end of the day, what a weight distribution does is it helps redistribute the weight throughout your vehicle configuration, your platform. So if 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 I'm towing a, a big trailer, it weighs 20,000 pounds, right? Or let's say 15,000, let's be real lightweight, it's a 15,000 pound trailer. That means I need tongue weight of between 1,500 pounds and 2,250 pounds of the tongue weight I need. And for a lot of vehicles that blows out their specs, right? They get a ton of sag in that rear axle. It ends up lifting up their front axle a bit. They start losing the ability to steer. It starts shredding the tires on their back axle. It's fatigue on their rear axle. They get less fuel economy. I mean, it just it just tears it up when we're towing these bigger trailers. And in addition, with that ball mount, a ball mount is only a single point of contact between the trailer and vehicle. Yeah, you have safety chain, but 
Hopefully we're only using those in emergencies. So what happens is this trailer tends to sway a lot more. So the, those are the two pain points that a weight distribution solve is when you have a weight distribution, uh, when you're using a weight distribution system on your vehicle and your trailer, first of all, what it allows you to do is it actually moves some of that tongue weight on back to the front axle. It moves that load that you're placing on the rear bump bumper of your vehicle back to the front axle. So it returns your ability to steer it returns your fuel economy, it takes off fatigue off your axle, and it gives you a more enjoyable and a safer trailering experience. And the importance of that, how that functions actually solves the second pain point of only having that single point of contact between the vehicle and the trailer is most weight distributions, our weight distribution in particular, has anti-sway point, right? Anti-sway resistance built in. So it has the, they're called spring arms. And if you've set up weight distribution, you're familiar with them. Those are the arms that hook onto the A-frame of the trailer, right? So you have an A-frame, here's the coupler that sits on the ball, and then you'll have two bars that go on the A-frame itself. And what this does is that's actually the point that it's applying the pressure in order to reduce the weight on the rear of your vehicle and bring it back up to the front axle. But not only that, these two swing arms attaching to the A-frame provide us with two additional points of contact between your vehicle and trailer, and that greatly reduces the sway on your trailer. So if your trailer wasn't properly loaded, if your trailer weight might have changed, if you went camping and all of a sudden all the water that was in your water tank on the front of your camper is now in the waste tank in the back of your camper, right? Those weight distribution, because it's readjusting that weight for you and it's providing additional points of contact, it actually reduces and eliminates, in most cases, a lot of that variability seen in a, in a living, moving trailing, uh, trailer and configuration. You said exactly what I was going to point out is the water situation in travel trailers. You know, you, you set up, you use your travel trailer. Uh, then when you leave, your water is no longer in your freshwater tank. Now it's in your black tank or your gray tank. So that water, you know, gallons and gallons, which equals tons of weight. Well, maybe not tons, but a lot of weight. A lot of weight, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that about, about the water. Is Is the... And I like the fact, like you said, I mean, for me, somebody that doesn't tow a lot, to me, three points of contact just makes way more sense than just a single point of contact. I think that alone is the difference that I needed to hear about, you know, how it helps. Is it only, so do you recommend a, a um, the weight distribution hitch for only heavy travel trailers? What about a travel trailer that may be, I don't know, 6,000 pounds or or 4,000 pounds dry weight or something like that? Or, or is it is there an advantage to using it at all times? So the weight distribution is the, is, is the industry standard. If we could use it in every situation, whether it's a 1,200 pound little lawn mower toter, right? Or if it's a 6,000 pound, 10, 15, 20,000 pound trailer, a weight distribution is able to distribute that weight across your platform and increase the points of contact, making your ride more stable. In every scenario, it increases the benefit. The reason we don't use it is, is laziness and, and difficulty. A weight distribution system, and, and this is the main reason we came out with the True Tow to, to solve these problems that we've seen in the industry, but the, the traditional weight distribution that you'll see on your grandpa's trailer, or might have been the trailer you bought last week, right? It takes, it takes between 30 minutes and an hour to set up, a lot of people only feel comfortable setting them up in the trailer dealerships to have a professional set it up just because there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of guesswork. And I, I use that word carefully because it does offend some industry experts. There's a lot of guesswork as far as where are we moving the weight to? When is the weight truly returned to that front axle? There's a lot of unknowns. A, a popular thing that I've seen uh, uh, trailer technicians do is they'll measure the amount of sag uh, of, of, of the lease springs themselves. So I have a, a brand new F-150, which typically have soft springs. And I, I, and I put my trailer on there, right? Let's say before I hooked my trailer up, I had, I don't know, let's say eight inches of the clearance. And after I set my trailer up, I only have four inches. But what they'll do is they'll set up your, your traditional weight distribution system and they'll crank it and adjust it until they get about that six inches back is their goal. There's no measurements. We don't know. That's just something we've done over experience with time. And we think that is a properly set up weight distribution. Problem with that is the adjustment. I mean, you're going back and forth. You're making adjustments to the spring arms that are applying the force. You're adjusting the amount of force over here by cranking some chain or adjusting the height on some brackets. 
coming back, measuring, going back and forth, trying to figure it out. Heck, even an RV dealership, the guy that does 40 of these a day, it'll take him 20 minutes to set up the trailer. And then you have your layman. If I wasn't to set up a, a you know a traditional way distribution, it'd take me up to an hour to set it up to do it to do it as good as I could. So the the true tow, what sets this product apart again is that hydraulic gauge built in. The gauge not only measures the amount of tongue weight that you're placing on this ball mount itself, which helps give you an idea of the load being placed on actually your truck. It actually tells you how much weight is being distributed back to the front axle of your truck. So instead of going back and measuring, instead of all the guesswork, we have a phone application that we've designed both for iOS and Android that you would just plug in your, your, your tongue weight. You would plug in some few measurements of your vehicle. It saves those measurements onto this phone app and it'll tell you the exact to the pound of what you need to crank your, your weight distribution to in order to get that 95 to 99% of lost front axle weight back to that front axle. Entire setup time. I take, I went with the engineer that designed it, Morgan McAllister at a trailer shop for a, 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 a show, right? Just teaching their staff, teaching their engineering staff. And as he was training the guys, I mean, he spent half the time talking to them. He set up the entire thing in less than seven minutes. That was how long the training took from taking it out of the box to setting it up. Because there's no more guesswork. You plug it in, you hook up the, the spring arms to the A-frame itself. You plug it in your app and then you just crank it down. Another beauty of our system is both the spring arms themselves are actuated off a single point. So instead of having to use chains and cranking and trying to set this guy up, it's a single point attachment. So you're just taking a three quarter bolt, right? And you're just applying pressure until it reads out the correct amount on the gauge and your system's done. And that was the excitement we had four years ago. The reason it took us four years I mean, it took me a little long to explain it, but it takes a heck of a lot more time to develop. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. We've actually, I'm, I'm always uh, very interested in hearing, and I think Sean is too, just how long something takes to get the market. That's one of the things that we have learned from doing several interviews now is, you know, all of a sudden a product shows up on the shelf, but people don't realize how much time, how much effort, how much calculations and testing nice. and studying goes mm -hmm. into having a new product on the shelf it's always very interesting so four years that's 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 a lot of work <laughs> yeah, <it> was, uh, <laughs> yeah very active four years and the product we've come out with we're we're proud i mean we we, we are pretty darn proud of it we've run into some hiccups uh, along the way but through just grit determination and an end goal in mind we're, we're very happy with the product that came out and it's beautiful one of the the funniest things about the product so sales on it are going <laughs> pretty strong the biggest thing is trying to keep up on production is so with the gauge built in it's actually made the head unit about four to six inches longer than what a traditional weight distribution ball mount head unit looks like so what that's given people passively or uh, incidentally was that people with their weight distribution if you have a trailer attached to the rear of your truck you can now drop your tailgate without having to detach the trailer because before, in order to get into your bed, you know, you'd have to take off the trailers, you have access to it. Now, because of our long head, that was a product of the hydraulic system built in. People love it. And yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd say, I'd say a good 30% of the units we move are just because people love being able to open up their tailgates. That is a nice feature, actually. That's, that's, that's great. Cool. Yeah. 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 I think that would be a big deal. <laughs> you would, I'm glad that you had talked about people with their measuring tapes and stuff like that in preparation for this video or preparation for this interview. I was watching videos and I did keep seeing people measuring the height of their truck, the wheel wells and stuff like that. And then they would they were they kept on using the word squat. They wanted to see how much the truck would squat. But I had no idea why I, I they never really explained what they were trying to see or determine. So I'm, I'm glad you went through that and said about measuring. And I guess they were trying to get it to squat as little as possible or try to get it to, to stay we're, where we're it was. back to factory or, or, or preloaded or as close as they could to preloaded uh, distance. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and so then, with and that, again, is that guesswork of trying to, I think if I can get it to this point, I'll have that weight back to the front axle of my truck. And again, you can, you can kind of see the idea behind there. It's, it's, it's very speculative. It's very, We've just always done it this way, yeah. right? And, and the funny thing is in our research, we found that most weight distribution systems currently on the market 
on average only returns 60 to if, if a professional sets it up and it's set up correctly it only returns 60 to 70 percent of that weight back to the front axle our system the truth toe our least accurate test was 95 percent return of weight back to that front axle and most of our tests were, were close to 100 percent around 99 is what is that is that achievement we're able to get back to the front axle so not only is it a tenth the time to set up the accuracy of it's unparalleled so that is why you can say that it is a true distribution weight or distribution hitch, I should say. <laughs> exactly. The true. Okay. Job. Exactly. That, that, yeah, that was one of my big questions, I think, when we first started looking into your company and stuff. And I, I think you guys are the only ones that are able to, to make that claim. Is that correct? The only ones, 100%. And, and, and the reason is nobody can escape the guesswork. And, and we're very grateful. We have an all in-house team of mechanical and electrical engineers that have come together to really develop this. Um, it's funny that the algorithm alone that calculates that what that number needs to be on the gauge in order to move that weight back to the front axle. I mean, that was a full year of, of development and a lot of R&D spend. But uh, the, the efficiency and how beautiful it is and the, the app that you can find on the App Store, the Play Store, I mean, it's such a beautifully crafted thing and it's so intuitive. At least I say, it. I play with it a lot. We're always open to reviews. So once you guys hop on the app, if you see something a little buggy, let us know. <laughs> and that app, I'm sorry, Sean, I just got one more question because he mentioned the app. I know you're trying to jump in there. I won't shut up. <laughs> the, the With the app, if somebody owns uh, multiple trailers, if they're like maybe in a fleet situation, can the app... Uh, save different trailer weights okay i can it only can save up to 500 though okay back to the drawing board on that one chris <laughs> i i'm not sure i fully understand the physics of how a weight distribution hitch works and i don't think i ever will in a in the time frame we have now but is the is the does your design is made so an average consumer can actually do this themselves instead of taking it to a service place to, uh, you know, pay a, a mechanic to do it. Exactly. Yeah, 150 bucks is usually what the setup fee is. 100 to 150, depending if you're in Utah or California. Uh, it's it's expensive, and I guess everybody can always set up weight distribution. The hard part is getting it right. Yeah. And we, we can say with confidence that yes, we are the first weight distribution that people can set up completely from start to finish by themselves. And through this phone app and the information that we can provide can confidently set it up correctly. And so they're not hopping on the interstate thinking, I, I hope I did that right. Yeah, I'm not sure I would be able to set one up right without the tools that you've provided because it, it seems quite complicated to do it within a, any reasonable amount of accuracy. Exactly, and, and that's that's the that was the greatest point is the accuracy, right? I mean, I can I can place the spring arms, I can set brackets on an A-frame, I can I can place place the spring arms on the bracket, I can plug in my the head unit into the rear receiver, but pressurizing it enough, applying that weight to the A-frame that's sufficient to my needs. And this trailer that's one out of five that I own, let's say, right? Our system allows them to have that exact number. And so there's no guesswork. So they're going from start right to finish. It eliminates 90% of that journey that they have to go through. Yeah, that's impressive. I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that, yeah. Um, now you, you mentioned, and I, I didn't see it on the website, but you mentioned a fifth wheel option, which is very interesting to me. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? So the fifth wheel has just entered its production phase as of February this month, a couple days ago. And it is an absolutely um, <laughs> amazing product. Where's it? So obviously I work a lot with the sales team, so I'm excited about it because it, it's cool. So the biggest innovation of this unit is it measures pin load, which is basically tongue weight that's placed in the bed of your truck, pen mm -hmm. load. And so it's it's very popular, the pre-orders that we've received for it, a lot in the uh, equine industry, moving horses, moving cattle, um, 
because those are <laughs> those are uh, animals that are very important in their safety. They don't like being jostled back and forth. And it's extremely important that you maintain the ability to, to break and control your vehicle, right? If, if you're a pin load, or right, you're the weight in the back of your truck or exceeds the ratings, you're going to lose your ability to break. You're going to lose your ability to steer. And so when somebody cuts you off when you're going down the road, you having to slam on your brakes or move around them, I mean, you, you might make it through. The trailer might be fine. But everything inside of it might not. <laughs> I, I mean, we have a couple of horror stories from here in Utah I won't go into, but there was great incentive for us in the industry as far as where our next safety innovation was going to be that, that drew us right, right to it. The beautiful thing of our unit, of, of our fifth wheel unit, is it is all aluminum construction, heavily reinforced. This thing is a monster of aluminum, but it weighs out at 35 pounds is what the bed unit is. What? 35 pounds. <laughs> crazy light. So instead of getting one of those big steel fifth wheels that you see on the road, this thing, you can take it in and out of your hand and it's rated for 30,000 pounds. Oh, wow. That, that was one of my questions was what's the weight rating? Sean, do you know what yours weighs? Oh, mine's really heavy. Yeah. I can't take it out by myself. Cause I have no comparison. Like when you say 35 pounds, it sounds light ish, but I don't know what they typically weigh. So I'll just I won't wondering the brand. My, my father-in-law has one from a, a, a a big uh, friendly company that we know. Um, and that sucker weighs 100, 120 to 140 pounds. I mean, it's, yeah. it's both Huge. of us squatting oh, to yeah. lift it up, especially in the confined space of a bed. You know, it, it's it's definitely a two-man job moving in and out. Okay, and so, so our that's system a is 35. You can lift it up with one hand and toss it in. An absolutely beautiful system. It has a couple innovations built in, like a silencer mechanism that's built around the column that helps reduce a lot of the, the sway and rattling. I mean, it's, it's a cool product. Well, just being able to, to go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. So the release date on it. So we're in production phase now. We're hoping for a, I'd say March, but COVID's kind of thrown everything back as far as production materials. Uh, a lot of the nuts and bolts we do source internationally just because brand new product and just lead times is absolutely insane. So our goal is March. Odds are it'll probably be in April that the first products are on the field, but production and manufacturing is currently happening on the unit and it is beautiful. It actually just passed certification and testing. Um, so it's, it's, it's a mean lean machine and I think it will be one of our most popular products on the market. And the pin weight, really it's, you can't determine that without right now without going somewhere in which case you're already towing uh, and it may not be safe. So being able to measure that when you hook up is, I mean, I, I pull a, I have a fifth wheel trailer. So I, I'm always concerned about that when I'm, when I'm towing is, it, is that a safe, is that the right weight that I'm putting over that, uh, over the bed of the truck? So and you're uh, familiar with these fifth wheel trailers. There's not a single one that's not intimidating as heck. I mean, yeah. these things are monsters. And so I've, I've seen people towing with a, a half ton truck that they put an aftermarket, you know, fifth wheel hitch on and they're towing a big 32 footer. And I mean, they're, I'm looking, is there any space between the tire and the wheel hop? I mean, nothing. I mean, there are, seven, and they have no idea. They have no idea. Cause a lot of times when you're towing, you might be setting your truck and trailer up at an angle and so a lot of the weight that you think you're putting in the truck or the achieved squat upon setup is vastly different once you're going on a flat surface or worse, you're going downhill, mm -hmm. right? And a lot more of that weight's placed front, or especially if you're moving cattle or anything that moves in the trailer, or if you're driving your trailer point A to point B, point B, you're loading up whatever it might be, bricks for construction or whatever it might be, and it changes the entire dynamics, and you're just hoping you're not going to blow out some springs on your truck. We're just hoping you're not going to blow out the rear tires of your truck. So our system, you can read at any moment. You just walk down. It's a it's a dual face gauge. You can read from either side of the bed, and it tells you exactly how much weight. So if, if something you hear something shifts in your truck and you're like, I don't know if that's okay, <laughs> it gives you an easy interface. Hop out and check the gauge. If it's within that 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 pin load weight that you want, you're golden. You can keep on trucking, having that having that peace of mind that your configuration is still set up correctly. And for people, it's, it's, it's night and day. And the price points, a lot of people ask them about price points. It is almost identical to industry competitors that do not have the hydraulic gauge set, set uh, system built in. And so price points, and this is the same with our ball mounts. 
The price points of our ball mounts are the same, if not more competitive, the industry competitors. Our fifth wheel is the same. Our weight distribution is similar to higher end product. That's, that's the one product that kind of steps out a little bit because it is a monster piece of engineering. Uh, but our biggest goal is we want to make sure safety is affordable. Right, for it to be affordable for the, the general population, for, for anybody that wants to be safe, has the ability to be safe. And that is the most important part of our mission. And I have, a, I have just one more question about the fifth wheel. Like I have a, a fifth wheel in my truck right now that's rated for 25K. And I, my, tr my original trailer that I had, my original fifth wheel was about 22,000 pounds. So, which is why I got a hitch that was rated for 25K. But let's say now I have a 14,000 pound fifth wheel. Um, is there any disadvantage to having a, a hitch rated for 30,000 pounds using such a light trailer? So with these units, there is not. So the only industry where that, that played an important role and that is really important would be in the weight distribution market. If you were to have a, a weight distribution rated at 20,000 pounds and you were towing a 5,000 pound trailer, how, how your traditional weight distributions adjusted the weight was, was how stiff those spring arms were, right? They'd be thicker, meatier spring arms that could flex and put more weight on the trailer for heavier duty trailers. So if you try to set up a, a 20,000 pound rated weight distribution with a 5,000 pound trailer, I mean, that trailer's gonna be hopping up and down. I mean, it's gonna be uh, as rigid as can be. Okay. Our weight distribution did overcome that difficulty because we don't rely on the strength of the spring arms itself, but that actuating point that adjusts the amount of force that each arm's applying. So with our true tow, our, our heavy duty one is rated at 20,000 pounds. You can tow a 3,000 pound trailer with it. And so that's another beauty, much like the adjustable, it replaces six or seven different fixed heights. Our true tow replaces the need to have two or three different fixed, uh, uh, our true tow weight distribution replaces the need to have two or three different weight distribution systems with differing strengths and, and rigidity in those, in those spring arms itself. As far as the fifth wheel, if you grab a 30,000 pound one, you're towing a 10,000 pound one. The only difference is the amount of reinforcements in the, the fifth wheel itself, but it won't impact the quality of your ride. Uh, I'm glad I asked. And then the, the distribution uh, hitches, Chris, are they adjustable in height as well for different height? Uh, they trails? are, they are. They, okay. they come available in the six inch drop and the eight inch drop, right? Just different lengths of adjustability, but yes. And they both, all of our units, adjustable ball mounts, our true toe weight distribution system, they both work in the drop position, which is your traditional draw bar facing down, and the rise position. So if, if you're towing a trailer that's taller than your truck, you can flip the draw bar both on the adjustable ball mount and the true tow weight distribution system. So Chris, at, at the moment now with the release of the fifth wheel hitch, how many hitches do you guys have in production now? Gosh, so we are selling, so we have a fixed height line. The, uh, we touched on earlier in the episode, our very first product, we prototyped a fixed uh, height with a gauge. That's actually a product we manufacture. It's extremely, extremely popular. And so we have the fixed height, we have the adjustable ball mounts, we have the true toe weight distribution, we have the fifth wheel hitch, we have our gooseneck products, and we make a gooseneck product. Just So our gooseneck product, the beauty of it, is it's actually a drop-in ball. And so it functions with all legacy OEM, under the bed gooseneck systems and BMW gooseneck systems. BMW is a very popular aftermarket under the bed gooseneck system. And so our system, our ball has a gauge built in right to the side, so you can drop it right into your legacy system and you're able to have that towing peace of mind and that pin load calculation without having to re-engineer the entire bed of your truck. And I'm, I'm pro, and not to, not to forget, we do have some products that are popular in the European marketplace. We just released a new, um, I'm not sure how familiar the, your, your, your viewer base is with European towing or Australian towing, which is a whole nother headache, but- We're pretty we popular in New Zealand. Zealand. What? We're pretty popular in New Zealand. Really? Yeah. And so we do have a distributor that distributes all in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, kilogram gauges, they're all des uh, designed with the Australian design rules in mind. Um, but yes, the Australian and New Zealand market is one of our fastest growing markets for the race safe. 
We sell quite a few of our normal adjustable ball mounts, our legacy ball mounts are the kilogram gauges. And then we also sell a toe ball. So it's a, a toe ball that's made to, to attach to any fixed height on the market and actually read the amount of tongue weight. And so we provide both a fixed height mount that has a gauge built in and a toe ball that has the gauge built in. And so we call it the universal toe ball. And we actually sell quite a few of those in the Australian marketplace also. That guy's rated at 10,000 pounds. That toe I also want to go back to something that you said uh, earlier about the weight distribution and making sure that you're, you're driving safe in case somebody cuts you off. For anybody that's listening who doesn't think maybe, oh, how often could you get cut off while driving and towing a vehicle? I know every time I take out my class A, I get cut off every single trip every single day, at least once a day. It's actually multiple times. I have no idea why that reason would be. I know I'm not blazing down the road, but you know, I'll be doing 62 and a 65 and people constantly are just, they cannot wait to get around us. And then they speed up past us. They get in front of us and then they slow down or they barely get in between us. I, I really don't you worked so hard to get in front of me. Why are you now going the same speed as me? hundred <laughs> percent. And, and people just don't, we, we, so we have a big old uh, super duty and we're bringing down aluminum and steel from Salt Lake. We must add 25,000 pounds of material towing on this, this ton truck, right? So we're maxing its limits out. Uh, rush shipment. That's why we're being a little crazy. So we're, we're bringing it down properly weighted and we must've got cut off and they give you two feet. I mean, when they slip in front of you, they're not like, okay, I, I'm going to give plenty of room, slip it. No, they're like, I need to shoot that gap, right? And they zip right in front of you and they and they apply the brakes because, oh, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Driving in Utah is a very magical thing. I recommend never doing it with the trailer. <laughs> At least not one that isn't precisely and perfectly balanced. So you know, at least you're in control of the situation. Can we talk about, uh, there's one other product that I, well, Kenny and I both think is pretty cool, and that's the uh, clam shell. That can you talk a little bit about that? We love the clam shell here in the U.S. Advanced Auto picked it up, AutoZone picked it up, Tractor Supply picked it up. Tons of legacy retail stores saw it. So, so what it is is it's a, a magnetized stainless steel clam shell that converts a two-inch ball to a two and five sixteenths inch ball. So the, the beauty of it is you don't have to, to swap out. You don't have to keep a second two and five sixteenth inch ball in the, the bed of your truck or your glove box. It's this little stainless steel clamshell. It weighs about four ounces that you can keep in the little side door or your glove department, and it's not going to beat the heck out of everything. So the design of it is crafted from forged stainless steel, and it actually has magnets on the inside of the shell. So when you place it over the two-inch ball, it self-magnetizes and holds itself there. This clamshell is able to withstand any weight that the two inch ball underneath. So if you have an 8,000 pound two inch ball, if you place this clamshell on it, you can with ease tow an 8,000 pound trailer and not have to worry about it. If you were to use one of our 10,000 pound two inch balls, that clamshell can withstand it. And how it does that is just two important points. First thing is how it encloses the clamshell. It is converting 100% of that load of that trailer right to the tow ball itself. None of the structure of the clamshell itself is actually being stressed in the towing of the trailer. The second point, and this is the most important, with how the magnets are structured around the ball itself, it gives it a friction-free rotation around the ball. This is important because it prevents friction wear from uh, uh, causing the clamshell itself to fail. Heck, we, we have one of these guys and it has over 30,000 miles on it that we've just been t driving in U-turns, you know, just figure eights for about a year and a half, putting as many miles on these guys as we can. And they are absolutely stellar. I uh, thought about it, it doesn't have a gauge built in. <laughs> it is a very cool product. We're very excited about Retail on these, 1995, 20 bucks, stainless steel, does not oxidize, does not rust on you, and it's gonna save you a major headache. Important note, with safety in mind, if I have a, if I go to, I don't know, like I go to Walmart and I pick up a little two inch ball that's rated for 1500 pounds and I put this clamshell on it and I'm thinking about towing a 10,000 pound trailer, the clamshell does not strengthen the underlying ball, right? Because all the weight's being placed on the little neck of that ball. And so if the ball's rated 8,000, the clamshell's rated 8,000. If the ball's rated at 600 pounds, that clamshell is limited to that 600 pounds. Important to keep that in mind. 
So on your website, you do have a list of dealers, uh, authorized dealers for your uh, products. Is that the best way for someone to go actually put hands on your product is to go to your website, see if there's any dealers close to them and, and go visit the dealers? That is the most guaranteed way to ensure that somebody's carrying the product. But to be fair, all of our products are available through Keystone, Myers, all the major distribution house, NTP Stag, they all carry our product lines, Fruto, weight distribution, adjustable ball mounts, clamshells. And so any brick and mortar that goes and sources product through these, these distributors, which is pretty much everyone in the United States, I mean, trans-American competition specialties, Performance East. I mean, every, all of these, most distributors in the United States carry our products. And so if you went to a brick and mortar that doesn't have it on the shelf, they could get it next day or within two days from one of the local distributors. But just because you don't see our products on the authorized dealer list, don't let that inhibit you. Go and visit your local brick and mortar and ask if they can source and get a way safe in there for you. Because we've provided the distribution to ensure that that towing peace of mind and that safety is available to as many people as there are in the United States. Okay. And then there is a lot of information on the way on your WaySafe website, and we'll link to that in our show notes. Um, but you do have videos, I think, on there, and a lot of images, and you kind of have uh, drawings of why uh, a appropriate tongue weight is important um, on, on the website. So I encourage everybody to go check that out, too even if you're not in the market right now for a new uh, hitch, uh, at least look at the safety information that's on there and, and see what how important this seemingly small piece of your, of your overall setup is on towing. And to note, our WaySafe app not only works with WaySafe products, but with any other towing product on the market the ability for it to store information. And on that app, there are also plenty of videos, manuals, and suggestions. And so you don't have to be a way safe customer to have that towing peace of mind. We're trying to provide the tools that you need, whether it's through our app, our website. Uh, we just started a new form, an online form with a bunch of facts and uh, uh, information and documents and, and posts in regards to varying aspects of towing safety. And you can also join our weekly mailer at way-safe.com that also shoots out safety tips and advice um, on a weekly basis just to ensure that that you know as many people as possible can be towing safely. And then if people have any questions uh, about the product um, or if they're you know maybe they're thinking about getting something but they're not sure if it's correct for their for what they're doing uh, is there a customer service line that people can call? There is. So the customer service line is 801-820-7020. And Ariel, uh, Addison, Liz, we have a whole team up front that spend the day answering questions, helping people choose the appropriate drop lengths for their ball mounts so they're not dragging on the ground, um, the proper weight rating loads that they might need for their vehicle and trailer. And if, if you're a little hesitant to give a call, I know some people a little phone adverse, Support at way-safe.com is a great resource to use. You can shoot an email over to support at way-safe.com and they usually get back to your 24 hours. Or you can even text the number 801-820-7020. That's also a text accessible line. And they're usually pretty good at getting back on that in about five to 10 minutes, you'll get a response to your text message. Oh, that's pretty cool that you have that text feature too. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Gosh darn, these millennials are only texted, so we can <laughs> I have a, a strange question. Uh, I have a strange question for you, Chris, and you don't have to answer. Do you guys partner with any other companies, manufacturers, anything like that? Sean and I are interviewing uh, Roadmaster Active Suspension in the next couple of weeks coming up. Are you guys aware of each other? Is, is Do you guys ever say, well, if you have the Roadmaster Active Suspension on your truck, plus our way safe, then, you know, that the two combined will give you like the ultimate, I don't know, towing experience or anything like that. Do you guys do anything like that with other companies or do you? We have, we do, and we're excited by the opportunity. So some of the companies, for example, we've partnered with, um, one is uh, 
rock tamer, excuse me. So rock tamer, they, they create mud flaps that go in the, the back of your vehicle to prevent all the dirt and stuff you're spewing up from hitting the guy behind you. And so we've actually went into design with them and you'll notice how our draw bars, right, our adjustable ball mounts, they actually have two holes drilled into the draw bar itself and the part that goes into the receiver. And those two holes are there so you can adjust how much of the ball mount is sticking out of the back of your truck. And that hole, that, that extra extension was designed so that if somebody's using a, a receiver accessory, such as mud flaps or steps or anything like that, that they can actually use our adjustable ball mount with those extra ex accessories. And that was in partnership with Rock Tamers. Another one is Blue Ox is actually private labeling our, our clamshells that we're making, our stainless steel clamshell converters. We're actually partnering with packaging and they're actually selling them through their distribution chain. So Blue Ox is a big partner. They've actually done some collaboration with us uh, with products such as the Fifth Wheel and things like that as we expand. Um, another customer, they're never gonna forgive me for forgetting the name. It's gonna come to me in about two minutes. So it's gonna seem kind of random when I spurt it out. But uh, yes, we, we do do partnerships. And again, it goes back to, we wanna get this towing technology and safety into as many avenues as possible. And if it will take a partnership to protect more people, to assist more people, that's something we're always willing to do to, to, to better the, the RV industry, to better the, the automotive industry. And, and how, does, um, how do those partnerships happen, Chris? Do you, are you reaching out to them? Are they reaching out to you? I think that's really cool that you guys are, are doing that. I think that's really impressive, actually. Well, the beauty of it is trade shows. I mean, that's, that was honestly the biggest pity of, of 2020 was that automotive trade show, SEMA, NATDA, we... They, they did their online shows, but it's that in-person communication. When I was able to, to walk up to Blue Ox's booth and talk to one of their engineers or their, one of their directors, right? And that communication, FaceTime, that transaction of business cards, because we realize we're not enemies. We're not fighting each other, right? We're each working independently to bring the maximum benefit to as many people as possible. And there are so many synergies that are available and possible in the marketplace and that the only reason they don't happen is because we have that lack of communication. And so honestly, every, every relationship we have, hey, Rock Tamer, we met with <laughs> Rock Tamer five, four, four years ago, I think it was, just met at SEMA. We started chatting. He said, gosh darn it, I wish I could use my product with your ball mount. I wish. I love that scale. I love how that's designed. I just can't take my product off my truck. <laughs> so we decided to, to collaborate and work together. We're able to, to create that innovation. Same with Blue Ox, our innovation and working together on the fifth wheel led to them thinking, we love that clamshell. Let's, let's see what we can get to get it through our channels. And the relationships keep growing. I mean, the conversations we're having with factories that would be traditional competitors. I mean, the, the distinction between competitor and ally is narrowing every day. And the more we communicate, the more we meet face to face, uh, the, the more that line will disappear. And, and eventually we're just all going to be bringing that, that, those benefits to our customer base, to, to, to people across the globe more and more. That's really good to hear. I hope more companies uh, take that, uh, are, that are listening, take that information and apply it. I think that's, that's really good. I think it's the first time we've ever asked that question, but maybe we'll start putting that question into our normal, our, our, I don't know what to call it, our normal questionnaire. <laughs> but um, as far as marketing goes, Chris, how do you guys market and what have you found works the best? Are you doing, I don't know, does YouTube outperform Facebook or vice versa or Instagram? Like what, what have you guys found that kind of works? Is it more word of mouth? So word of mouth is huge for us. I mean, we our, our growth has been exponential. I mean, last year we sold an insane amount of adjustable ball mounts and already January, the slowest month in company history is already outperforming our very strong fourth quarter that we had last year. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't make sense, this constant ramp up. And the more people that own WaySafe, the more people that experience the gauge, that hear positive feedback on it, the faster it grows. So our adjustable ball mounts are on a rocket right now. And the weight distribution, we finally caught that wave and we're seeing sales on it start to grow quicker and quicker and quicker. And so we're assuming 2021 for our, our fifth wheel will be the launch year, but we're expecting some insane growth of that line in, in 2022. But as far as ads, we do market. Um, it's, it's been interesting. Um, as, as many people know, paper, TV, 
news ads, they, it tends, your return on dollar invested tends to get lower and lower, especially as, as more younger customer bases, even our older customer base begin to move away from these traditional outlets or, or sources of information. And so online Facebook, uh, YouTube is, is very big for us. We're very big video presence on YouTube as we do uh, monthly videos. Um, but honestly, direct to consumer marketing. Uh, I hate saying it, but Amazon's a good Amazon uh, is a good spend, right? Because people are there and they're looking for the buy box. And so Amazon's always been a big spend. We will, we have done a large spend. We will be March. Let me see if I can pull the date. Okay, so we are participating on the advancement series, which will be on CNBC, February 27th. So that's 2:30 p.m. Eastern time on CNBC. Uh, 1230 Mountain Time. So that is a Saturday. WaySafe has a segment on this advancement series that, that we filmed last month, and we are very excited. As far as return on advertising spend and all that, we don't know it's there, but the opportunity to educate potentially millions of people of the importance of towing safety was too good to pass up. So that's February 27th, 2.30 Eastern Time. February 27th will be on CNBC on advancement. Yeah, very cool. I, I think, like you said, too, word of mouth. I bet you, as people are getting uh, getting the way safe, and especially at RV parks, everybody, <laughs> I was going to use the word nosy, but that's not nice. <laughs> but it looks different. You can you look at one of your way safes, and especially with that gauge right there, you're going to get campers, neighbors coming up and saying, what is that? So, yeah, I could see that being a, a quick way to spread um, the, the word about the product. I was at an RV park in September. They didn't even see the weight distribution. I went to the truck. I opened the tailgate and my trailer was attached. Two people came up and said, where can I buy that? I don't <laughs> even care about the price. Where can I get that to open my tailgate? Craziest thing. So unintentional, but it's blowing up. You should just drive around with the tailgate down. <laughs> <laughs> So, Chris, if there's one piece of advice you could give people that are new to towing a travel trailer, what what would it be? The biggest piece of advice we can offer as is, is a company is is to be safe, uh, right? To be safe, to recognize that you're not only protecting what you're towing in the back of your truck, whether that's your your toy hauler with your new razor. You're not only protecting your your family, whether it's your your significant other, your children in the back seat. You're protecting everybody around you on that interstate. And, and unfortunately, it seems to be overlooked so often is that we're always thinking about me, me, me. I think, well, I can handle this. I'm not scared of towing this. But the people around you on that stuff, driving next to you, they're scared of driving around you. And so it's extremely important that we apply safety to what we own, to what we love, and those around us. Thanks to Chris for coming on the show and talking to us about way safe and towing in general. There's always so much to learn about RVing and I feel like I learned something new every time we interview someone and this was no exception. Please be sure to check out their website. We have a link in the show notes. None of this would be possible without our sponsor, Battleborn Batteries. We appreciate everything they do for us and the RV community. Please be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for all the latest news about the podcast. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode.